out and just let Chloe in. Okay, brilliant. So, Rob, if we kind of start to pick on you then, if, I guess the first question is, if these guys have never ever approached a caterer, a kitchen, a restaurant, a cafe, anybody like that before and they're looking at them catering a camp what what is it what's the approach what's the best way to go about it no clue i don't know well um, has everyone got a relationship with a local restaurant or you know have you got your favorite restaurant in your town where you're based where you can go in and say can you provide me food if not is there a a popular place you, you you're better off trying to find the place that's always busy because they'll be more acceptable to your approach but you also need a place that already delivers because if they don't deliver hot food, they won't get it right because hot food doesn't travel very well. It doesn't have a very long lifespan. Um, not knowing any of your events, hot food is going to be, they're going to need a table, chair, sit down meal, cutlery. Uh, there's not many bits of hot food that you can pick up. You won't be able to deliver burgers and chips because it won't meet the criteria. You won't be able to deliver pizza. Uh, there's nothing stopping you doing uh, like a, a panini because it's hot food or a, a hot wrap or something like that. But the easy ones are spaghetti bolognese, sausage and mash, uh, lasagna, cottage pie. If you're caterers, if you talk to them and say, well, do me my sausage and mash the first day, make a batch cook your potatoes so you've got enough left for the second day for your cottage pie. You need to guide them in, in what you are allowed and what you're not allowed to an extent. Packaging, people get hung up on recyclable packaging or compostable packaging, but the budgets you're working with, you can't really put them constraints onto the restaurant. Um, packaging is quite expensive. If you think of a pizza box, a 12 inch pizza box for a plain cardboard one actually costs a restaurant about 25p. So when you factor that into what they've got to cook for you and their man hours as well, don't get too hung up on packaging because it literally just goes in the bin anyway. Um, <clears throat> the crucial thing is that restaurant's got to be within 10 minutes of your venue tops. And you've got to tell them what time you want it. You don't want them dropping it off at 10 in the morning because whatever you've got in that tub is going to congeal by lunchtime. Um, always good to have a snack. Ignore, ignore Shelly and that. You've got to put a cake in there or a biscuit or something. Oh, yeah. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you follow the rules to the letter, it's meant to be fruit and whatever else. But there has to be a sweet treat in there. It's Christmas. So, uh, you, you know, you can sneak two in there. A healthy drink. Always, We always go for a flavoured water rather than a fizzy drink or something like that. Um, cartons are fine, but depending what activities you're doing, you'll know how much sort of liquid they need throughout the time. Some people are sports heavy. Some people are art and craft. So, again, you can stipulate this. The, the money you've got per head, there is more than enough money there for a restaurant to give them a, a bloody good meal. Yeah. I think as a guide with that, we've said to camp providers, when you're having a conversation with a restaurant, don't go any higher than kind of five or six pounds. In your opinion, Rob, is that amount suitable, knowing that a restaurant might only be doing 15, 20 meals? £4.75. £4.75, you can do a bloody good meal for £4.75. Okay. You may have to pick them up from the restaurant at £4.75 rather than being delivered. Okay. But you can negotiate £4.75 a meal. That's going to give you a main meal, crisp snack, drink, some form of fruit. Um, it's really hard to do sort of a, a vegetable snack at, at winter time, but you can do you can do better than a school meal for £4.75. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, the budget we worked to over the summer holidays when we had um, Hearts Catering Limited the allocation out of your cost per head was £4.14. And that's when you had £20 a head. So you've got £30 a head for Christmas. And we appreciate that some of that might be paying for heating and lighting, lighting costs. And, and at your venue, if you don't have tables and chairs, you are going to have to think about how children are going to sit and eat. It's not acceptable for them to be sitting on the floor eating a hot meal. So there are places that you're going to be able to get tables and chairs from that we can help you when it comes to hiring them in. Um, I think firstly, from a, just a you know an, an etiquette perspective we don't want kids sitting on the floor eating hot food but also safety we don't want hot food spilling and, and that sort of thing it's much better for them to be sitting at a table and having that kind of social experience um rob when it comes to 
allergens and dietary mm -hmm. requirements, knowing that the nature of how families book onto the camps is that ideally we know a couple of days in advance and camp providers do have the option to close their bookings 24 hours before um, to help with registers and conveying dietary requirements. As a, as a restaurant, what can providers look for knowing that we could have anything just, from halal to gluten-free? Yeah, I mean, halal is quite easy. It's not difficult to do halal. Gluten-free, again, isn't too difficult in hot food. When you're, when you're doing cold food, gluten-free is more of a problem. You need to tick your boxes for your main allergies. I don't know. Last time we was on, someone was going to produce a form or a drop-down menu when they sign up. Have you done that? We're working on that. So over the summer holidays, yeah. it was an open text box where parents could write whatever the allergies were. But that yeah. brought out so many variations that we've said we're going to have it as a drop down where parents can select a multiple of vegetarian, yeah. vegan, halal, gluten free, dairy free, all of the kind of key allergens. And then yeah, we the, the trick is to tell your restaurants not to use nuts, make it a nut free environment because that's a massive allergen. Yeah. So that's the, that's an easy box to tick. Other than that, I mean. Yeah most most hot meals will have some form of dairy in or egg in or so you're just going to have to wait for for the charts and see what what comes back on it but you you're asking restaurants to help you out in the busiest time of year it's christmas this is where they make all their money for a quiet january and february yeah. so the the quicker you can get that information to them the the, the better response you'll have um, is, is it when we talk about time frames is it you know what is that time frame do you want to know a day before two days before the morning no, no. The so the ones that we've already signed up with we already know give or take how many kids they've got on each day what we were doing in the summer was we was getting a week in advance any allergies uh numbers then numbers can go up by one or two they can't yeah. go down really because once you've started cooking it you're cooking it you're getting that many meals um yeah. But you should know a week in advance, really, who's on it, who's signed up. If one or two come on, it's no problem because we've got to meal plan. So we need to know all of the allergies in advance. If 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 you've got three or four dairy ones out of a, a group of 15, you'd then probably look at a meal that's got no dairy in it anyway, rather than catering for four that have got you know dairy intolerance and the rest that haven't. You can structure your menu or your packed lunch around... The, the, the multiples that you get through. There aren't, I mean, we did hundreds in the summer and there wasn't that many allergens, to be honest. I don't think, um, how do you put it politely? The guys that are using the scheme aren't too fussy about what they get to eat as long as they get a meal kind of thing. You do get the odd one that is yeah. you know, definitely think, dairy intolerant or whatever. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a, a little bit of it is based on location as well. So if you were to look at the kind of communities that live perhaps, so Chloe that's on the call is from Watford, football yeah. trust if you were looking down there you're more likely to get a higher number of kids that are looking at halal food because of yeah. the kind of demographic that live in that area so you're right in stevenage we're not probably going to come across that um but different parts of the county there are going to be great considerations especially around as i say halal, well, halal shouldn't be a problem for a restaurant in watford because they're used to catering for people in watford so yeah. your, your, your demographics all work if you stay local yeah yeah um Last thing I want to mention, and then I'm sure you guys are going to have lots of questions. There's there's quite a few people on the call. Um, when it comes to crockery and cutlery, again, are we thinking that camp providers are, they might be thinking, oh my goodness, I don't have 30 knives, forks, plates. Uh, no, no, no. The, the food, the hot food should come in a container um, to give away my favourite meal. So if you get an egg fried rice, it comes in a plastic tub, doesn't it? Yeah. And then put it on to, because you guys have got enough to do, put it on the guy that's doing your catering just to supply you with disposable knives and forks are so easy and it's not going to add a huge cost. They can buy them a, a thousand at a time. They'll get a mixed bag of knife, fork, spoon, thousand at a time, and that'll be enough to run your whole event for however many days. Then you haven't got to worry about washing up. You haven't got to worry about storage and things like that. So you want the, the meal delivered so they can almost just get it out of the bag, put it on the table and, and eat away out of the tub and then all in the bag, all in the bin. So that is a fair request to a caterer. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're approaching a restaurant that already does takeaways, like I said, they'll have all this anyway. You'll get a serviette, knife, fork, spoon, or a spork, which is a fork, come spoon combined. Um, you know, if you're going to your local calf down the road, they'll say, oh, yeah, we'd love to do it because it's got the feel good factor about it. But actually, will they be able to do it? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. 
like I said, I'm really conscious people might want to have questions. Is there anything that anybody wants to ask, you know, as far as where we've, as far as we've got to for the minute? <gasps> no, everyone's got it under wraps. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, all right. So when we go back to numbers, we know again that there can be quite a lot of fluctuation in numbers on the camp. So you might be expecting to do 30 covers at a camp and then um, the day before the coach looks online, looks at the register and we've actually only got 20 bookings. What is best for the camp and best for the restaurant in that situation, Rob? Do you want a phone call to say, can we drop it by 20? Is it too late? What's, it, what's the best thing? It would be if you didn't give them, it would be unfair if you didn't give them 48 hours notice because the way the hospitality industry is working at the moment, everything has gone up in price. Everything's difficult to get hold of. There is no such thing as fresh fruit and veg at the moment. Some of the stuff you get is literally it will last a day. So these guys are going to be buying in okay. a day or two in advance tops. You couldn't ring them that morning and say, oh, we're down to 10 now. But you can, I'm, I'm right in thinking that these guys come to you and say, I'm having 20 every day. I do. You'll pay them for 20 every day. If some don't turn up, that's not your camp provider's fault. They can still boo you for that and the food will yeah. still come. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. yeah. So I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much if the numbers drop. Put your meals in that we want 20 each day. If you only get 18, 16 and you get a 20, then the staff get a meal. That's the yeah. best way to do it. The money's there to be spent, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think it's yeah. better that kids get the opportunity to have two helpings of something rather than... Yeah, or a kid gets to take one home if he's not got no dinner that night. Yeah. What is actually touching on that? So one of the stipulations of camp providers is that there is somebody on site that's done their level two food hygiene certificate for when it comes to serving food. Um, and allergies. You can, do it, you can do it online. It's so simple. No, no. Level yeah, two that's, yeah. yeah, that's something they cover. But when it comes to you're talking about keeping food perhaps till the end of camp. <clears throat> what about yeah. the way that food is stored and only it being available for a couple of hours? The, and... It depends on the product. It depends what's in the, the top, really. Um, <laughs> there's not many things that if you've prepared it that day and you keep it in a cool, dark place that you can reheat at night in a microwave. Microwaves are magical things. They kill everything. So, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, you know, if you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're getting some fresh salmon and eggs, I wouldn't reheat that in the evening. I would put that in a bin. It, it all depends what you get. Sorry, all I was just mentioning about food labelling, if what we've been what we've been told is that if children are going to take food home, it needs yeah. to be labelled with what the ingredients are on there. Uh, so oh, that families are aware. Jessica's rule or something, isn't it? This is Natasha, the new rule. Natasha, That's Natasha it. Law. Natasha, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but then you're asking the restaurant to go above and beyond. The restaurant's not cooking you a meal for someone to take home that night putting more onus on them they're dropping meals that can be eaten at that point so the answer there is they have to be disposed of fine okay, okay. yeah um, um it's probably too much work to uh, is it i mean we would be all right because we would just print a label and put it on it but you don't want to scare people off because you believe it or not most places won't say yeah i can do that for you some yeah. of these guys are going to struggle to find someone to supply their food yeah i think it's just it's just a consideration it's things that what we don't want is for kids to be taking food home at the end of camp and then suddenly you get well, home they, home they can't take the main meal they can take extra crisps and cookies and drinks and stuff but yeah. they're already labeled then aren't they yeah um okay. yeah um, do they have um no, I was going to say you could, if, if people need to take them home, you could give them as a dry good so the pasta's not cooked and whatever. But then you're in a whole other entity again, then aren't you? No, leave it, leave it as they don't take them home. It's easier yeah. option. Otherwise, your your price per meal is going to go up because there's more work going into labelling. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if we, if you've got a camp, I'm trying to think of all the different scenarios. If you've got a camp provider that approaches a restaurant and says we are running our camps for 10 days because some people will be um we want a menu that's got a bit of variety to it what we don't want is the same dish day in day out. Yeah, you, have to, you have to change it daily yeah you have to change it daily but it's christmas so it opens up your menu to loads of great ideas you can you know yes you, you and i spoke we're actually going to do a full-on christmas meal on the last drop for everyone so yeah they get a christmas dinner i don't know how yet but we're going to 
Yes. So what other suggestions if 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 a restaurant is asking a provider to say, right, what is it you want me to provide so that our providers can go a little bit more sort of well equipped and, and feel that they know what they're asking for? Can you bat off like five, six ideal dishes? Who me? Yeah, what give me give us some suggestions of what they can consider asking. Got, for. What would they normally have at school uh, over winter? I mean, I see nothing wrong with delivering you know, pizza slices or something, because in that you've got bread, you've got cheese, you've got tomato, you can put a few veg on it or whatever. It's actually, the worst bit of the pizza is the base, but if they're running around and they're active, they actually need a bit of carb put back into them, don't they? So yeah, yeah. a pizza's fine. I would steer away from burgers because there's not a lot of health in that. Like I said earlier, sausage and mash is a good one. Chili con carne or a spaghetti bolognese, a cottage pie, shepherd's pie. Uh, spaghetti and meatballs always goes down really well you could do uh, like a pasta bake which is so easy for a restaurant just one big tray bake and it's portioned up you could do a pasta with like an arabiata sauce and a basil kids will all turn their nose up and go i don't like that as soon as they taste it it's bloody good yeah um you, you nuggets and chips as a real real sort of last resort if depending on the restaurant you're talking to but then you can venture into the world of, of hot wraps and you could do like a, I don't know, like a, a smoked or barbecue chicken in a hot wrap, bit of salad, bit of mayo. Or you could go into the paninis with the, the, the tuna and the cheese and things like that. Um, but I've just gave you about 20 there. One of the so one of the things um, all of us on a call with the, the Department of Education yesterday. And one of the things that's come up is that it is acceptable for children to have soup soup and a roll soup and a sandwich as yeah. long as you're not doing that every single day or as long as you know you're not getting away with the sandwich bit and not including the soup there is still a hot element to it but a bowl of soup on its own may not be filling enough um, it's hard to travel though if you've got 20 kids soup goes okay. in effectively like a mcdonald's coffee cup if you go to any of the high street sandwich chains you get your soup in a in the same sort of cup that you get your cappuccino in. If you're asking someone then to travel them, someone's boat's going to have a load of tomato soup in the bottom of it. Because what you don't want to do is get there and then start portioning it up. You literally, for, for the food provider, we want to be in and out because we can. Here's your stuff, off we go. Okay. Uh, you could put soup in like an eight ounce uh, sealed container. That would work. Okay. Um, but again, soup doesn't stay hot for long. So one of the other things we've got that we're more than happy to lend out for people to use over the summer holidays, we had um, thermo hot boxes. They're like black polystyrene. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Yeah. We've got a stash of them in Welling Garden City um, that belong to the project, but we're happy to loan them out to you if you want to use them. And depending on how many kids you've got that are going to be coming to your camp, you can have two or three of those and, and kind of swap them around over the day. So you might leave one with the restaurant, use one, and then the next day they use the next one, you return it. So you've got two or three that you want to use. They will, they will extend your hot food holding for a bit longer if you yeah. get your delivery and put them inside there. They'll, yeah. they'll hold the food hot for longer. But again, it depends on the food. Pasta starts to dry out as it gets sort of older. Yeah. Um, yeah, skate bolognese, something like that would be fine in there. Uh, yeah, you kind of want that food delivered within 15 minutes of them eating, really. Okay. I mean, you've all had takeaways at home. If the delivery driver does a drop before he gets to you, your food's cold, isn't it? It's, yeah. So unless you want to pay the extra 70p to, to get it straight to you first. Yeah. No, that's um, but there are some things that are still edible when they're, they're lukewarm, but they're not as yeah. enjoyable. Okay, no, that's brilliant. Um, I'm just going to ask again in case anybody's got any questions about anything. And, or, or if not questions, how far along are people in trying to make those relationships with caterers? Hi there, sorry. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello Hi. there. Um, I'm calling from a company to work Sapphire Gymnastics, hopefully trying to get involved first time round for us. I just had a quick question about how the children select the foods because I'm completely new to this. I know that obviously they book it all online. Yeah. But what if you do have, you know, vegetarians, you know, say, for example, doing a sausage and mash, for example, do you, is there an option to put two different options that they could select? Is that how it would work? Yeah, so when we worked with Hearts Catering over the summer holidays, um, for anyone that doesn't know, Hearts Catering are the primary provider of school meals at primary and secondary level. Um, 
and there are always if you've got children at school you know there's always three or four options a day that they can choose from when they were delivering to camps there was always two options there was always a vegetarian option and there was always a meat option the children don't know what they're going to get until they turn up on the day and they can make that choice in the morning so they'll be told today you've got a choice of mac and cheese or chicken pie and veg you choose what you want that morning um and hearts catering are well versed enough in this that they can kind of manage those amounts um when you take your bookings through the playway system lauren one of the questions as we said earlier on is to identify any allergens so i think it will be for you to make sure that you've had a look on the register a few days in advance and identify with your caterer we've got four vegetarians on this day can we make sure we've got a vegetarian option or and rob can kind of help out here do you just go for a simple half and half and the kids just pick when they get there. I really yeah, know. That's, that's that was my concern. I'm just thinking if I yeah. had say a macaroni cheese and a sausage and mash, two, two options. Yeah. And then everybody chose the mac and cheese, and there wasn't enough. That was my only sort of concern. Yeah. 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 I we think... didn't we didn't we didn't run it that way. So as I said, when we got the orders a week or the numbers a week in advance, we had the allergies a week in advance. Because if you do it that way and deliver half mac and cheese, half something else, you're going to get kids that just go, oh, no, I don't want it. You know, I wanted that one, I haven't got that one. So when you send the, the restaurant through your list for the week, on there will be the allergies and you literally, so we were delivering some halal, some vegetarian one week. They literally had their own bags and the bag was labelled up as a halal meal, as a vegetarian meal. It takes away any arguments then. Yeah, I think the, the benefit with Hearts Catering is that they, some of them were cooking out of their own kitchens in schools. Um, if they weren't cooking from the kitchens in schools, they were cooking from hub sites. So it didn't, it was perhaps easier for them to have those two offers. It's what they're used to. There is nothing wrong in just having one meal available as long as that meal does cater for dietary requirements. Don't sure. feel like you have to give them a whole range. You know, they're not going to a restaurant, they're getting a hot meal. Um, yeah, I'm, thank I'm you gonna... so much. That does actually help a lot. Thank you. That's all right. I'm just going to get Orla to jump in because Orla coordinated a lot of our food over the summer. So just two mm -hmm. seconds. An awful noise. We do it differently. We're sitting opposite each other and it's setting off the right. So we're getting feedback. So can you all hear me? Yeah. And um, the thing with, with um, for example, with Hearts Cage, I think Shadi touched on it is like the menus we were able to share the menu possibly you know at the time of booking so the parents could see potentially what the main meal was but the, there was no choice other than this is the main meal for today and the other option was to cover um dietary requirements such as halal or vegetarian which um were basically covered on the same alternative so for most camps they were getting a delivery say if it was 20 children 15 regular meals and then five which would cater for the special dietary requirements obviously if there was other special requests like nut free nut free or gluten free or dairy free they, they would be separately um um as rob mentioned separately packaged and maybe in a little bag or a box to to highlight that with the child's name on it um it is really really important that the uh, dietary requirements and allergens are catered for properly um and that could be in the simplest possible way you could agree with your um you know your local restaurant or cafe whichever it is that you know there's a, a set standard meal which child without allergies or requirements can eat but if they have any you know if they are dairy free that that meal is also suitable for halal or vegetarian so you could work with them on the menu like that feedback that that i've had from uh meeting with other um half or holiday uh, coordinators around the country is that the the, the simpler the, the food the better it's try and give the children what they're used to getting in school um and also uh, something that came up yesterday which was quite interesting was to try and create kind of a little bit of color or variety in the meals so you know rather than a, a plate of beige food as such you know if that's what it is but tr try and add in colors like you know um like if, if you are offering soup to the children have it and something that's 
possibly either red or green so that they can clearly identify what what it is rather than just a, a, a bowl maybe a vegetable soup which it's it's just like oh my god what's in that sometimes whether it was if it's a carrot soup or a tomato soup or a pea soup it's really clear to the children what what, what they're in for as such um, and yeah other than that it's really just um, making sure that what's put on the children's plate is appetizing that there's some attraction to it um, possibly having the ingredients split as well so you know if you're serving um like pasta or something that there might be a little bit of uh, let's say like whether it's you know raw peppers or carrot sticks or something on the side that they have the option to try so they might have a nibble and go oh, i don't like that or they might have a nibble and decide yeah i really like that but little alternatives like that so they were just some some things that come back nationally from from the other food coordinators I think with the puddings as well, and like Rob said earlier on, my son at the very least comes home every day from school telling me he chose a cake for his pudding. So, you know, with all the will in the world, we are trying to adapt to school food standards, but kids are used to getting those nice treats at school as well. Um, so, you know, don't feel like if they're offered a dessert, it's got to be fruit and yogurt every single day. You can't do that. They're kids and it's, as Rob said, it's Christmas and we, they're not going to the camps to go to school. They're going to the camps to have fun. Um, so, you know don't don't feel like you can't give them those kinds of things as well um i'm gonna just pick on a couple josie josie have you thought about your catering yet hello sorry i'm just um um, but yeah, I've got in touch with someone who I know who is a um, she works in the school kitchen, Hayley Berry. Okay. And she's got like 20 years experience and she does private events as well. So she is doing our catering. Brilliant. Um, and she's got all the training, she's got, she's getting pretty up to date. But, so yeah, Fantastic. she's a cool. She's great. Brilliant. Yeah. Good, good stuff. And Kirsty, what about you? Where are you from and where are you likely to be getting your catering? So I work for One YMCA. So we have um, uh, an in-house catering team that provide um, food for our hostels. Okay. Um, so they're able to provide a meal, a hot meal for the children. But it's just nice to hear about other ideas. Um, I know what I feed my toddler, but I know toddlers are very different to uh, yeah. <laughs> older children. So um, yeah, it's just nice to hear about the other ideas. And um, yeah, so we're we're okay. I think for catering. Um, but that's if our catering team aren't to sort of run off their feet uh, yeah. with our with their hostel work, which is the priority. Yeah, yeah, of course. Brilliant. And what about Neil? What are you guys going to be doing on your camps? Um, well, we've, we're moving into our new site on the 23rd. Um, so we'll have a cafe and a, obviously um, f we can provide our own food. Um, mm -hmm. So it's quite exciting that we've we've never been able to do that before in East Art. So. Yeah, fantastic. Good stuff. And have you had conversations with the cafe, with the, the cooks or the chefs? Or uh, so we have a region. We have a regional manager. Okay. Um, so obviously they're kitting out the the cafe as we speak. So yeah. I've I've already had conversations, and yeah, there's no issues. We've um, in Barking and Dagenham. We I think we did over. I've got. I'm not sure how many they did over the summer, but um, she coordinated that. Uh, as well so she's she's well versed on what's what was needed and Brilliant. um they had a really successful program over in Barking and Dagenham so Fantastic. something obviously we're not looking to do big numbers they mm. uh, they did ridiculous numbers over there I think uh, like hundreds hundreds a day yeah um but yeah so I'll sp I've been speaking to my equivalent over there as well to just to see how that went and how successful it was um, yeah. so yeah good stuff and Chloe Hi Shelley, you're right. Hi, yeah. um, hopefully we are going to be using the same company we use for our summer holiday camp. Um, so we had a local vegetarian company called Go Cooler who provided the food, um, which was got, like really successful variety of different foods. Um, kids kind of loved it each day. So we're hoping to use use them again. Yeah. Um, we are just waiting for confirmation for them for hopefully kind of this week or next week, whether they're able to. Um, I know the Christmas holiday is quite busy for them yeah. and I think the woman who runs it is planning on going on holiday yeah. so we're just waiting for them to confirm whether they're able to or not but hopefully. 
Fantastic. Good stuff. I think we'll just mention as well at this point, because you guys won't necessarily know, you've all put your applications in and we found out on Wednesday evening um, across the county collectively, we are offering just over 20,000 spaces through that Christmas period for kids to come to camps. So like massive thank you and huge applause to the work that you've put in to put your applications in because we would have been chuffed if we got to 10, 12,000. And to hear from Hearts Catering, uh, Hearts Community Foundation, that we got to just over 20,000 places. <laughs> Lauren's little thing it is absolutely immense. And some of you, I know that Lauren is, is one of them. You guys are brand new to this as well. So you might have heard of it in the, you know, in the past and over the summer and um, gymnastics. Sapphire is a, is a gymnastic club and I'm sure you are going to be inundated because they have been. Um, Hartford and Dolphina have been involved before and they were so, so popular. They, those are the camps that the kids love um you know and they get booked up so quickly because i think they're sports that children just don't necessarily get to access or it's too expensive or they're on waiting lists so to have um to have some new providers is really really exciting for us um there are some resources on our website if you are still kind of stuck for ideas or there's anything that you're not sure of if you go into the happy section on the hsp website there's a tab down the left hand side called specialist services and once you get on there there's information about um people that can provide meals and then there are certain providers that we've spoken to so the likes of rob his information's on there and then as you get to the bottom there's a link to another list of caterers that we've just googled it's by no means exhaustive there are still thousands more out there but we've tried to give you a little bit of a head start kind of with fairly even county coverage so that you can look on there there's also a link to um oh, what is it all of the food Oh, the food standards, the food standards food. agency so you can link from you can look up postcode or by town or by star rating and you can find other caterers so we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to find caterers if at any time it's worrying you there's anything you're not sure about please come back and speak to us um rob has promised to be my advocate and respond to as many queries as i pass his way <laughs> when it comes to you know it, it's new isn't it we get the sport we get the enrichment but finding your own food is sometimes um, a little bit scary because it's just a, a new thing to do um but if nobody has got any more questions rob is there anything else you want to add that you've thought about no no i'm all good no, I'm, I'm fine but yeah I'm, I'm here for questions if you need them but they all sound like they've pretty much got it covered which is good yeah it's good oh i didn't mention maria sorry maria what, where's your catering going to be coming from Oh, sorry. sorry, it's all right. No worries. I was quite. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. Where's it's your right. no going to be? Um, we will. Um, we've got a Morrison's next to our centre, and okay. they do have a cafe. So okay. we are talking to them to because in the past they actually provide sandwiches because we did it on Fridays only. So Friday was good to get a sandwich yeah. and the crisp and stuff. But um, as a hot food, they've got a cafe, so um, hopefully they can they can support us in in there. But yeah, oh, food is the trickiest bit. For us as well so yeah. everything else we've got it covered but um food is is a challenge and which is your camp um we are in st Albans and we offer um combat sports oh the combat academy yes yes oh fantastic oh it's nice to meet you i remember seeing your stuff listed over the summer <laughs> thank you oh, lovely to see fun. you as well <laughs> we actually we worked with morrison's so over the summer holidays some of the money that we had was put into um, creating food hampers that went out to it's called short breaks local short breaks offer. local offer so it's generally families that have got children with additional needs um yeah. and we work with them and morrison's to put together some really lovely food hampers that went out to those families so it's lovely that they're they're involved yeah they were very them. supportive over um, over the summer they were really keen and they the part of their community as well that they shared that they did with did with us so it gets people talking about yeah. it as well so it was it was super so hopefully they can provide us with hot meals as well which is the bit that is, yeah is that, but we, we'll make it work we will definitely make it work wonderful thank you thank you so much okay in that case then you are free to go i'm going to pop this webinar up on the web page today so if there's anything you want to refer back to please feel free um or if you've got any questions just email us at the half email address and we'll come back to you when we can thank you thanks rob for your time thank you Jenny. bye bye see you soon yeah. thanks bye. everyone thank you bye. Bye. Bye.